Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mostly Photo is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mostly Photo with Lisa Bettany and Leo Laporte. Episode 11, recorded May 31st, 2011. Mickeloland. Mostly Photo is brought to you by Ford and the 100% reinvented 2011 Ford Explorer. With room for seven passengers, best in class V6 highway fuel economy, and available sync with My Ford Touch, the 2011 Ford Explorer is perfect for your adventures with the family. For more information and to submit your photos to the Mostly Photo Adventure Awards, visit mostlyphotoadventures.com. It's time for Mostly Photo. Leo Laporte here and filling in for Lisa Bettany, who has the day off, Mr. Trey Ratcliffe in Austin. Hey, Trey. Hello, how are you doing? Great to see you, as always, from StuckInCustoms.com. I'm doing really, uh, really well. We actually want to uh, announce a slight change in format. One of the reasons Lisa's not here is because she's such a superstar these days. Her, uh, She's got a new application on the uh, iPhone store called Heist, the Heist, which is number one has already, I've been told, sold several hundred thousand copies at 99 cents. And Lisa's down in L.A. doing some tours around it. Of course, that plus her Camera Plus application are keeping her pretty busy. So what we've decided to do is to change the show a little bit. It's called Mostly Photo because it's mostly Lisa, but because uh, Lisa is not going to be around to host the show on a regular basis anymore, we're going to rename it to Twit Photo, take a week off, uh, next week because we're going to be in Los Angeles for E3 anyway. And uh, starting June 14th, this show will reemerge. Same feed. You don't have to resubscribe. Uh, same time. But it'll be called Twit Photo. And uh, Catherine Hall has agreed to uh, fill in uh, or actually host the show now uh, in Lisa's place. So uh, while well, Lisa will be back and we love her and we'll see a lot of her, but you know Catherine Hall. Oh, and, I, and, and we she's love a her. wonderful woman. She's going to be a great host. I love Catherine. We should, I should introduce our guests for the uh, show this week. <laughs> Mikkel Oland is here, and boy, I've known you longer than almost anybody. Uh, we go back. At least 10 years. We go back, yeah. Mikkel was a regular on our uh, Call for Help show, talking about photography and Photoshop, because uh -huh. you're a Photoshop whiz. Yeah. Uh, and it was with Mikkel that I got to go to Tasmania in 2008 for the Lightroom Adventure. And a great book came out of that, which I have here somewhere. Yes, here it is. Uh, this was such a fantastic book. Um, it is, is probably, I don't know if it's still in print, because it's Lightroom 2, and Lightroom 3 well, is it, the current It's version. actually in print, and it, it sells okay, because it's not just... I mean, not that much has changed. Not that much has yeah. changed. There's a, obviously, there's new things in Lightroom 3, but... There's a picture of me, Trey, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so... It doesn't look like first class. It was business. It was very comfortable, but wow. it was a long-ass flight. It's wow. 13 hours or something. Oh, right? it looks like you were leaning forward into the seat in front of you for a second. <laughs> no, no. No, I was fast asleep. I didn't put on my jammies, though. They did give us jammies. They gave us those cute jammies. Yeah, they I have us... a picture of you with a hat. With I that. actually did put the jammies yeah, on later, yeah. I have a picture of you. So the idea behind these books, and you did two of them. One was in Iceland, and uh, this right. this is the Tasmania trip, is you took right. a dozen or so great photographers yeah. to a great locale, had them take pictures by day, and by night we'd come back to the hotel, and, and we'd all work together in the room using Lightroom, Betas. This was when before the Lightroom uh, shipping versions came out. So, and the uh, and the Adobe team was with us. Yes. Uh, people like Melissa Gall, and and they would right. work with us, show us how stuff worked, yeah. and the and they would take a lot of feedback from the photographers. So Unbelievable. That, yeah. Adobe was so awesome, and what a great idea. I mean, this we field tested their their software. That's one thing. The other thing is they, they actually listened to us and incorporated yeah. our suggestions. Well, when you have photographers like you, like Catherine Hall, like Peter Krog, like Bruce Dale, uh, Katerina, um, uh, oh, what's her last name? I always forget. Anyway, some great photographers were on this trip. Yeah. And uh, when you get people like that, yeah. Amazing. This is Charlie Kramer. Oh, he was wonderful. He he does some amazing uh, stuff. He he's Charlie was a like a, a, a view camera guy, like a big format guy, right? Very serious. Yeah, yes. very serious. Yes. Um, so what would happen is we'd we'd oh Katrina Eisman, that's who I was uh -huh. thinking of. We'd play uh, with these photographs, get some great tips, and it became a book. And the book is full of the photos that people took, and then how they use Lightroom to make those photos uh, pop so on the page. So it's a combination of inspiration and instruction. That was the, that's the, um, the formula for that book. Incredible. And, and for that whole project, actually. Yeah. 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 This is, uh, yeah, it's, still, it's worth getting. I, I think, 
I think the uh, foreword is, is particularly good because it was written yeah, by... Yeah, thank by you, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the, here's the crew of uh, photographers. It was just, uh, just an amazing... Um, what a wonderful trip that was. Yeah. And um, I, I wish they would keep doing these. I mean, You it, know, I'm going to tell you something that uh, Bruce... I heard um, secondhand that Bruce Dale was at Photokina and, um, and he was talking to Winston Hendrickson. You know, uh, you, you remember Winston yeah. from, from yeah. Adobe. Yeah, and and who said that of all the trips he's taken, all the trips on National Geographic everywhere, he said this was his favorite adventure, his favorite trip. Well, I kind of fell in love with Bruce Dale. <laughs> I did too. I think we all did. Uh, and in fact, it's my goal to get uh, Bruce uh, on uh, this show soon. I, I'm sure he'll be on. Thirty years as a National Geographic photographer, and the the fun of of um, traveling with him is he was very generous with his time, his stories, and his knowledge. Uh, here's a here's a picture that I uh, that I took of Bruce Dale in a graveyard, which is not to be interpreted as it being any in any way reflective of anything. But he, he, in this picture, he's wearing a parrot on his uh, on his uh, shoulder because he set up a and it didn't it didn't really come out, but he set up a boat ride and a pirate wedding. <laughs> In Tasmania, right. that he was going to take pictures of, and so he had the bird left <laughs> left over from, from the pirate, the pirate wedding. <laughs> I don't know if he got any great pictures from the pirate wedding. Oh, but he did a whole video on that. Did he? I think that's on Vimo too. You oh, I'll have out. to see. But Trey, did you notice that he's shooting Nikon? Yeah, I did. Well, he's a he's yeah. a he's a real man. Oh, I should mention this, folks. Here I am. You know, Lisa and I are, love our 5D Mark IIs, but uh, we're sitting with two Nikon guys, Trey and uh, Michael Olander, both big Nikon. Uh, shooters i think i as i remember one of the cameras that bruce dale took with him was a nikon d70 which he'd had modified to shoot infrared you got it you got and he it got some amazing yeah. pictures in fact there's right. there's one in here uh that he took um of um what was it cloudy bay i can't remember the name of it, it was just a, a, bruce and i and peter krogh and winston all, all went off one day to the middle of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> but he got the best picture. It was easy uh, to do in Tasmania. It really <laughs> is a spectacular place. If you you know if you get a chance to go, it's just it's just gorgeous. Here's, I would go back in a second. Here are Bruce and Peter met, showing how light their Gitzo tripods are. Oh, I think that's, <laughs> is that Charlie? Oh no, that's, uh, that's Peter Crow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. It's still a, a good. Well, I'm glad to hear that's still in print because it is oh, a yeah. great book. Sure, you but you're doing something new. You have these videos now that you you're know, doing. <sighs> Well, we're all learning that, that uh, <laughs> we have to uh, adapt here. And so what I'm doing now are these training videos. I don't know if you Yeah, why don't you hand me that? that so I can show people this. this. Is, yeah. uh, I got this. With I Adobe got, Press. And I got the Lightroom one, and I love Lightroom, it. That's Lightroom, and then the, this is the other one that's on Photoshop CS5. And I'm actually really enjoying this. Instead of doing so these books. So it's a book. It's still a book. Well, there's a booklet. But the, most of the meat and potatoes are in the, in the videos themselves. And you go in there, and you can you can scan to the place you want to go. It's very easy to navigate. The company that puts these together, video, a company in Graz, Austria, by the name of um, Video to Brain, they're just extraordinary. They're really good. Uh, and they're building these uh, products for Adobe Press and Peach Pit. And working with them and working with this new in this new way has been pretty exciting. And, yeah. you know, it, it's a little bit... It's a little bit easier than writing those, the books. <laughs> Trey's doing the same thing. Trey, you have a you have a video uh, for uh, your HDR tutorial that's just excellent. I just love. Yeah, yeah I think there's a yeah, place for books. Yeah, I think uh, video is the way to go. Hey, yeah. Mickle, can you can you download your videos uh, uh, off the web? Or? They're going to be available on the web, but I think right now they're just shrink wrap. You buy them is it with a DVD? The DVD and you know the. <laughs> By the way, Traditional. this is not a photography implement. This is a hair care product, and I'm going to put this away. We, we, we had It's a long story, but on MacBreak Weekly, everybody had big hair, and a hair care product company <laughs> sent us a box of, Lanza sent us a box of hair care products. Let me, let me put that away. I was going to use that for a prop. <laughs> you want it? You can have it. Spray. Do not spray your lens with this. Well, it gives you the soft focus look. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, so, Mikkel is uh, here to talk about photography, uh, but obviously he's also big on photo uh, photo uh, software. By the way, I don't know if you saw this. I tweeted it yesterday for our mostly photo viewers. Um, uh, uh, Amazon was offering a Lightroom for 120 bucks yesterday. 120. 120 dollars. Okay. That's a great deal. Well, that's a good deal, but that's it's gone. Lightroom three, huh? I, I had to almost, yeah, I almost hate to bring it up because oh, I love that program. You know, they, they've done such a good job with it. You taught hey, me to love it. Michael, do you think that, that Adobe will ever put Lightroom in the Mac App Store? I have no idea. I wonder if that 
if the offering it uh, uh, for that cut price on Amazon is a prelude to that, uh, Trey. I have. A, I'm going to bet yes. And I bet I if they so. do, because Aperture's there right. for only eighty dollars. Oh, really? Yeah. So if they That's do, another great program. They're going. Yeah. Well, it's a. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah. Although all of us here use Lightroom, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, we're all Lightroom. Great. We're all okay. Lightroom. Yeah. People. So it's okay. You guys heard of uh, the new uh, perfect layers from On One Software for Lightroom? Now you can do layers in uh, Lightroom. Oh please, stop! No, no it's okay. It actually works. <laughs> <laughs> I know the whole reason I don't use Photoshop is I don't want to do. No, layers. no, but for some really simple layer tricks, it's very nice. And I agree. I love I love the simplicity of Lightroom. But yeah. once in a while, just to be able to do layers and not to not go into Photoshop, not have to go, to or not have to pay for Photoshop. For well, that's, that, that's true. So it's a plugin. It's a plugin, but it, it works seamlessly with. with with, uh, with huh. Lightroom. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. So um, I, before we get to your uh, to our conversation and our with Michael Olin and our tips, I do want to uh, pass along some congratulations to Trey Radcliffe because you've updated 100 uh, cameras in one, your iPhone app, and you've kind of, you made some news. Tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, we got on uh, Master Bowl and we were just on uh, TUAW today and uh, Gizmodo and uh, and all over creation because uh, we we have the first uh, app that integrates with Instagram. Wow! So you, can, you can take mm. your photos and export them right into the Instagram network. I love Instagram. I use it all the time, and and uh, it's just so convenient to be able to uh, take a picture and put it right in there. So now you know there's a hundred new effects you can add to your Instagram photos. So it's it's been doing great. We're in the top 100 of all apps. We're not uh, in Lisa Bentney territory, but uh, we're, <laughs> I don't think anybody we're, is. <laughs> it's okay. We're we're happy. Uh, we're happy. It's fine. A hundred cameras in uh, one. There's an iPad and an iPhone uh, version, and um, yeah, it's nice because you know I when I use Instagram, I I will take a picture in the regular camera, import it to another program like 100 cameras in one, import it, in, you know, I, it takes several steps. And then finally, I load it into Instagram and post it. Now you could just do the whole thing uh, within 100 cameras in one. That really is a, a great time saving uh, feature. Congratulations. People don't maybe not know this, but Trey is a, a very accomplished programmer as well as an accomplished photographer. So it helps. It helps. Did Instagram work with you? Did you talk to Kevin and company? And or yeah, I did talk to Kevin. I uh, through a, a mutual friend. I, I spoke at this conference called the EG conference in Monterey, and then one of his friends saw me there, and we ended up meeting over email. It turns out that he was a a, a big fan of Stuck and Customs, and he had worked at a previous company where uh, we had we had worked together indirectly, and uh, and so yeah, we just decided to do it, and uh, we're the first. I, I think there will be a lot of other apps that do it as well because it. The thing is about Instagram is it's so awesome. That network is so incredible that uh, I think this is sort of tantamount to um, when Facebook opened up its API or when Twitter opened up its API and let other people start to send it data. Um, they've had their API open for a while so that people can take photos out of it and use like screensavers like Screenstagram, which is right. a really cool way to look at Look at stuff, but this is now they're going to start letting uh, people submit into that network, and uh, it's it's pretty exciting. Instagram is greatness. I, I love Instagram. I although I I you know I kind of wonder. There's so many great sites like Flickr. Um, there's that new 500 PX, which I'm really uh, liking that just came out. Mm -hmm. um, and Instagram is like a Flickr minus the web integration. If if you could just if I could just look at all of Trey Ratcliffe's Instagrams. Right. On the web, I would be happy, and I, and I don't know why they haven't done that. Would you please beg Kevin to do that? <laughs> well, they only have four people. I'm I sure know they it's a small company. I know, and uh, they raise some good money, but I'm sure they're just you know they're taking their they're time smart. and building yeah. organically, and uh, I'm sure it's on their to do list, and it'll get done eventually. Because, like you said, it's a it's an obvious manifestation of the product. I would love to go look at this stuff on the web too. Yeah, there's no way I can, you know, I can I can load Instagram and I can find you as a friend and I can see your pictures one by one on my iPhone or iPad. But what I really want to do is a Flickr style thing where I could look at all of your pictures and, and see. Mikkel, do you use uh, do you use uh, iPhone or uh, I mean, yeah, do you take yeah. pictures with your yeah, iPhone? I do. I mean, it's it's um, you know certainly not my first camera, but I 
I always it, have it with me. <laughs> it's the camera you have, and often, yeah. I guess you probably, people like you and Trey always have your yeah. D3s with yeah. you, right? I, I mean, mean, it's a little heavy to carry around all the say, time. The thing is a monster. Well, that lens, too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what is that lens on this there? This is that, oh, this is my favorite lens, 14 to 24, 2.8. Oh, it's a it's a it's pretty wide. Yeah, and you like full, to shoot and wide, it, and it's a full a full size sensor, so you get right. the full wide angle out right. of it. Right. Yeah. Do, do do you get uh, barrel distortion when you go down to the fourteen? Or you know, no. If you're shooting straight, you know how that works. If you shoot straight on, you don't get the distortion. It's only if you, you go up or down. Okay. And now with the new with Lightroom three, you have you can fix you that can fix distortion. It. Right. Lens distortion is it's almost a thing of the past now. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Um, can I let me talk to you about that, about that lens distortion for a minute, because, sure. um, you know, there's this lens correction thing you can do in Lightroom and Photoshop, but I find sometimes, actually, I find a lot of the time that when you make that correction, it doesn't help out a whole lot. I think it mm -hmm. does with fisheye lenses right. and maybe some other lenses, but usually most of the time when I take a photo and it's it's awfully warped or things just aren't working right or people on the edges, they look uh, really, you know, flattened out. Mm -hmm. What I like to do instead is I, I go into transform and I, I warp. And I find that just by hand dragging things around, uh -huh. um, I can correct the photo uh, about a hundred times better than that mm -hmm. lens correction can. So I, I think that lens correction uh, uh, feature in Lightroom and Photoshop is really overrated because it doesn't always improve the way my photo looks. It really depends on what profiles are loaded and what lens you're using because it's all about building profiles. And you can make your own profile uh, so that you can get the quality you're looking for. Uh, and if the profile has been made for you, it may not be it may may not be working the way you want it to, and you can create your own profile. You can always go in there manually and tweak it and with the lens distortion. Uh, um, they have sliders. Yeah, there's sliders, so yeah. you can go in there and play around with it. It's certainly true with the fisheye. Uh, the, the the correction is very obvious right away. It's amazing what it does with the fisheye lens. Right. But again, it's all about profiles, and every lens is going to be a little bit different. Yeah. 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 Well, we we weren't going to get into the your your bag yet, but <laughs> we we can do it. Actually, what I'd like to do is is your three tips. We ask every photographer who joins us uh, on the show to give us uh, three tips for a uh, better photography. Uh, and you have some, well, somewhat unique <laughs> tips. <You're, laughs> but I don't remember them. <laughs> well, I'll read it for you. Okay. Your tip number one is keep in shape. Oh. Stretch photography <laughs> is a physical activity. Yeah. Now I've seen you take pictures. Yeah. So I know that you live that. <laughs> I live that, and, and so many photographers or so many picture takers take uh, the, the, their photographs from the, the same vantage point, and it really uh, it really shows if you're if, if you're just starting out or if you haven't really got the got it yet yeah. that photography is about you know moving around. It's yeah. really about looking at the angles. It's about it's about looking and seeing and exploring. And in order to do that, you've got to move your body. And you know, it, especially when you're using a big, heavy camera like we are, Trey, um, you, uh, you better be in shape because, you know, lifting that thing up and down and getting on your knees and crawling around, uh, I, it, be in shape. That was a, a real lesson for me when we were uh, in Tasmania was that the great photographers, and they were all great photographers, would be incredibly patient, yeah. so would sometimes wait for hours for the light to move until it was just right, and were incredibly aggressive. <laughs> I have pictures, I don't know if I have them here, of, of Peter Krogh oh. practically climbing down a cliff to get <laughs> Peter, a shot. You I know? can see him doing that. Peter's very energetic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so stretch, folks. Well, yeah, keep in shape. <laughs> stretch, yoga. You know, <laughs> I love that. It also keeps you you mentally balanced, which is not. Oh uh, yeah, not a Better, bad thing. Well, yeah, I don't know. Being twisted a little bit mentally might help. <laughs> mentally unbalanced. Uh, number two, and I think this is a really good one. In fact, it's kind of um, the philosophy of of this show. It was very tempting when you know here we are a technology network and we want to do a show about photography to get kind of very much about the technology of the whole thing. And uh, you say don't be intimidated by the technology because no one knows everything. Uh, you can't remember it all. Learn where to go and who to talk to when you need yeah, answers. Yeah, absolutely. I, that, 
there's too much information we're trying to cram into our brain, and it's not. It's overwhelming. You don't need to know it all. Right. But you need to know where to get the information when the when the situation presents itself, and that's you know through books, through through you know, you know, a whole myriad of ways of of getting information. Having a guru that you can call up. I have people I call up all the time. Really. Bruce not, Dale, for example. Yeah, yeah. I'll call Bruce and ask for uh, you know, Peter Krogh. I have a whole Rolodex. Do people still know what Rolodexes are? <laughs> no. Okay. I have, a, I have an address <laughs> you have book. a contact list. <laughs> that just will get me answers to anything. Katrina Eisman. I mean, these people, you know, you got to have that. It's yeah. your team. Katrina your team. teaches photography at, uh, is it NYU? She's, in she's York, really yeah, brilliant she's in New York. Yeah. Well, she writes books. And yeah. Great yeah. workshop just leader. Yeah. Do you have a guru that you turn to, uh, I have. I, have oh, I was going to Oh, excuse me. Yeah. No, yeah. Of course. Um, no, I don't. In fact, I and not that there's anything wrong with that. Would you that, like one? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I've uh, Guru. I, com. I, I, I do preach something a little bit different. Um, not not necessarily better, but just different. In that, I always like to um, guess, and I like pe other people to guess how something was done, and then make mistakes trying to replicate it, yeah. and then. In making those mistakes, you may accidentally discover something else, or by the time you actually discover how someone did something, your knowledge will be so um, so deeply felt and known. You'll have this really uh, amazing foundation. I have a theory. Trick is. I have a theory. Are you a musician, Trey? Uh, no, I'm not a musician. Because that is how guitarists and others learn yeah. to play, is they'll hear a lick and they'll say, how did he do that? Good. And they'll spend hours trying to figure it out. And you're right, you may never figure it out. Right. In fact, Keith Richards in his biography, uh, which I loved, mm -hmm. says they'll never figure out how I did it because he <laughs> plays a five-string guitar with an open tuning, a, like a, a G tuning, and, and nobody can ever figure out the fact that he's not even playing with six strings. Mm -hmm. So they'll never figure it out. But in the process of trying to, they learn. I don't think that those are incompatible points well, of look view. Look at my third tip. I, now I remember my tips. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just came back to me. Observe the work of others. Go to gallery openings. Go to museums. Participate in online forums. Read books on photography. Your own unique style and vision will emerge. Exactly. That's what basically Trey was saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's true. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm big on the guru thing, though, because uh, I know yeah. I'm not a very good photographer, so I... But see, I'm surrounding myself. That's one of the reasons we do this show. I surround myself with people yeah. like Mickle and Trey. And I do the same thing, Leo. I mean, I really believe in that uh, and having a team. To yeah. hear that, yeah. There's just so much to it. I mean, there's one thing from the shooting point of view, then there's the processing point of view, then there's a the sharing point of view. All of those are very, they can be very complicated. And Trey, I think, knows this because Trey does workshops, yeah. Trey does photo walks. Isn't that kind of the value of a photo walk, Trey? Is 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 watching what the other guy's doing and looking at and thinking about and kind of it is learning. and um, you know I I do adhere to the uh, Richard Feynman school of of teaching in that he feels like he stops learning and wondering about physics as soon as he stops teaching it oh interesting because as you teach even some of the fundamental concepts mm. you have to come up with a, a concrete way to communicate it in your own mind and then translate that into the brains of many other people and that simple process makes you kind of re-question everything you know and then some of the wild questions you get back the childlike innocence of the people that you're teaching it kind of helps you as a photographer to re-question these things you think you know and it keeps you young and it keeps you fresh and so that's why I try to put about maybe 10% of my year into uh, doing some kind of teaching yeah. just so that I can keep it fresh and light in my own mind. I, that's really true. I learn yeah. about technology by doing all the stuff I do um, because I have to explain it so I have to understand it better. You know, the word for teacher in Norwegian is the same word for to learn. Oh, I love Leda. it. Yeah. I love it. Hey, speaking of Norway, Mik Mikkel uh, is, as you might gather, by the weird spelling of his name. <laughs> and I should tell everybody that his website, MikkelOland.com, if you're listening, you're probably going to O-L-A-N-D or something. No, no. M-I-K-K-E-L-A-A-L-A-N-D. Oh, it's up now. It, is, right. <laughs> I told everybody, stop visiting the site. We want to, we want to make sure we can get there. And uh, Mikkel uh, recently spent a year in Norway. Were you born in Norway? Is that no, my, my father's from Norway, and I was born in San Francisco. 
but uh, the family back, home. I grew, up, I grew up a lot of the time in Norway, yeah. going back and forth a lot. Mikkel's yeah. working on a book about uh, his father and about Norway and about going back and spending a year with your family in Norway called A Year on a River in Norway. In fact, I'm trying to convince Mikkel, actually it was his idea, but I'm trying to encourage him to, to put, uh, put this on Kickstarter so that you can uh, get the funds you need to continue work on this. But it is already, these are the proofs, an amazing book. And uh, one of the pictures in here is of your daughters. We want to take a look at this because it's also on the uh, front page of your uh, website. Now, first of all, did you do this with the 14 to, to uh, 24 lens? Yeah, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. would be that would be that lens, that camera, everything, yeah. It's a beautiful lens. Yeah, yeah really great shot. Um, let's talk a little bit about this. One of the things we like to do is take a, a favorite picture of yours and, uh, and take it apart. Now, uh, in this case, we can go... Uh, I put the From original. beginning to end, Do because this original? is the final version. Yeah, let me yeah. show you the original, which is there you go. in color. Yeah. So, oops, went too far. Let's, uh, I zoomed in a little bit on this. So uh, you did a lot of cropping and changing. Tell us what you did to the photo. Well, uh, this is the kind of photograph in the past, you know, I may have considered using a fill flash, right? Because I wanted to draw the attention to the girls. And, and there's a, quite a l bright background behind them. And... But, you know, with a fill flash in, in, in the daylight situation like this, and I was a little bit of distance away, that it's, very, it's, it's very difficult to get, <laughs> unless you have big strobe units with a lot of, a lot of power. Right. Um, and, and I would do that if I was on assignment and, you know, in, in the old days, and, you know, you have assistants and you carry all these right. big lights around. Uh, but here, I wanted to imitate that look, and so I shot it, not really worrying about how it was going to look uh, at, at the time I was shooting it, but more with thinking down the line. And then went into Lightroom and basically just uh, added, uh, added light selectively using the adjustment brush. So I could paint. I, I darkened the whole image. So I brought the whole image back, you know, even much darker than you see where there were the original. Did you, did you monochrome it first? Did you make it black and white first? No. First, first I did the adjustments. First the adjustments adjustment in brush, color. And then I decided, because I had a color version that I liked as well. And then, it, and then I went, mm, you know, let's take a look at this. It's a beauty of working in Lightroom. It's totally non-destructive. You know, it doesn't matter. You can make different versions of the same image. Right. So I had a color one that I was quite happy with. But then I went in and, and played around with the, you know, the black and white version. And that just popped. It just made it's sense. It's quite dramatic. Yeah, yeah. But, but they're both good. I just, I just really like the black and white a lot, a lot uh, more. Interesting. Now, of course, on the web page, it's even more cropped. You you've cut out the uh, the rocks. Well, the, that's the just the function of the way it fit in the, as a background. I, okay. I can't remember. It maybe even a little well, bit. Well, I'm looking in the book, <laughs> yeah. and you cropped it quite a bit as well. The yeah, rocks the are cut off. In fact, yeah, you, well, you there, cut it because I made it vertical. You made it portrait. Yeah. 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 Hey, Michael, let me ask you something about that shot. Sure. Um, when when you zoom in really tight to the girl on the left. Mm. Um, her inside leg, her left leg, I was kicking up. Uh huh. Um, there's a, a, like a dark line above her foot. Now, did you, is that a function of the, the clarity slider that made that happen? Did it make that artifact and you just kind of left it because it made it pop off the background? Or was this something you did on purpose? Because I think it, it I think it helps to define the, the leg and everything. I see what you're saying. Uh, on the, on the, on the feel. inside of the leg there. I see exactly what you're seeing when I switch back and forth. On the forth. top of the foot. Yeah. Yeah. On the, on the back, to, the back foot, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, right. No, I do. Everything I do is, is so calculated and careful. I, I never make mistakes. Fred. <laughs> it was an accident. <laughs> it was an accident. No, no, no. It's not that. No, I don't think it's a mistake. I think it works. It, I think it thank looks you. Uh, really interesting. And I wondered how, uh, if you're talking right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to give it that outline. Or uh, if it was I, just I a probably, happy accident. I can, I'm looking. I think I see what you're talking about. could be that I just didn't get in there with the adjustment brush and, and lighten it up. I'm not sure exactly. It does look you, like there's an outline, but it, but yeah. it definitely, and it gives it what's nice, and it, you see it too in the, uh, in the print version of it. It gives it a three-dimensionality uh, that you might have lacked otherwise. They really are pulled up out of the background on this. Yeah, and, I, and with I, that kind of I action, work, it's um, great. I guess I'm, I, I, I describe myself... Trey Moore is a kind of an emotional photographer. I work with the emotions, and somebody else may have looked at that, and they, you know, if you look really carefully, maybe they'll say, well, you know, the masking wasn't perfect, or, you know, whatever, you find some artifacts, and they're, pro they're right. I mean, there's going to be, you know, probably some problems, probably some issues like that, but I'm, 
I look at the picture when I'm working on it and I'm feeling it in my, I'm feeling it in my gut. And that's at the end of the day, that's really how I respond to photographs and, and when I'm working on them, how I work on them. I wonder how much of that comes from the fact that like others of our generation, unlike Trey, uh, we started with film and didn't have this, you know, kind of detailed control we have now with things like Lightroom and Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think there's a there's a lot of things going on there with the, with our uh, older brains, our old fart brains. <laughs> um, I want to find this, but where did I put it? I have your uh, your ca your county fair. Right. Oh, here it is. Yep. Here it is. Yep. So one of the things Trey that uh, Mickle did. Or this must have been very early in your. Uh, I was in, in my twenties. Let's put it yeah. that way. It was in the seventies. Yeah. Started in 1976. Yeah. And where, did now did you want to be a photographer before oh. then? Oh, you're your whole kidding? life. Oh, not, not my whole life. I mean. Yeah. I was in high school doing, my dad was a scientist, and so I did the science math. You know, you mm -hmm. remember that? They, mm -hmm. they, they pigeonholed mm -hmm. you, and that's what they told me. You're not an be. artist. You're all well, left brain. It wasn't even, yeah, you're going to do science and math. And yeah. I, I did it, and I, you know, it wasn't my favorite thing. My senior year in high school, they said, do whatever you want. You've already fulfilled all your requirements. I took photography classes, <laughs> and I went, oh, my gosh, why didn't they tell me about this before? <laughs> I mean, I just exploded with passion for it because it, it actually, it, it's a little bit of a compromise because there is technology there. Oh, right? yeah. A lot oh, yeah. of technology. But yeah. at the same time, it just, the creative thing, the, the and it, that, so my, my, my career started right then, right. really. And county fair was right, uh, right after that. I went to the county fair looking for a summer job, and there was a guy with a photo studio with a, you know, one of those, uh, you get your picture taken, you get it out in 10-minute type deal. And uh, he looked at me and didn't even ask if I had photography experience. He just said, you're skinny, you fit in the dark room. Because <laughs> it was it. like a trailer, right? Oh, I it mean, was a trailer, and the dark room was so you couldn't even move. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that became my, like, it was a job. I worked the county fair circuit, went every week to a new county fair, uh, living in the back of a trailer, sometimes in a cheap hotel. And these are people who are not looking for, well, first of all, this is probably the only picture that's going to be taken of them. You know, this well, year, back right? Back in those days, <laughs> now I really sound like an old fogey. Back in those days, you know, it, it was something to get a, a picture taken. And, and the, a lot of people couldn't afford to hire a photographer. They didn't have those uh, studios in the mall like they do now. It was, right. it was a de big deal so to have a family here's portrait. A, let me get a, a tight shot of this. This is That's you working in the area. studio. So these people would come to the county fair and get a, get a family portrait. Like you said, it would probably be become the family portrait. Right. They're, they're not going to go to the fancy photography studio in town. They're going to do it at no. the county fair. And, and when you get three 8x10s and eight wallets for $3, you know, come on. Right, <laughs> right. And so this is Harold Foote, who's... He was the owner. Concession He's the guy that it hired was. Me. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful old man that, uh, that uh, you know, basically put, put me in the dark room and then eventually made me a manager so I could become the shooter. And then 1976, I started uh, shooting and saving. And then I said, oh my gosh, this is, you know, these are amazing photographs. I should get model releases and ask the people if it's okay if I put their picture in a, in a book. And over five years, I, I must have, uh, you know, saved hundreds and hundreds of uh, photographs out of thousands and thousands that I photographed, uh, that I took. And put the collection together in the book, County Fair Portraits. There's great stories, too. For instance, it says here, the dog collar around her neck, this was taken at the Fresno District Fair in 1980, she explained, could be easily removed and used for defense. <laughs> she didn't believe her knives or guns. Dog collar. <laughs> yeah. This guy's good. I like him. <laughs> Very ZZ Top. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really fascinating. Anyway, this, and this was all done with film. Right, and we still well, they, had a they'd go, they'd go get the cotton candy, ride there a couple of rides, and come back and get their print. Absolutely, we'd heat the developer. I don't know if this means anything to the audience nowadays, but we'd heat the deck to ninety-two degrees, <laughs> and then drop these to four speed by it up. Then you drop the film into it, and, yeah. you know, and it sizzles. <laughs> and thirty seconds later, you pull the four by <laughs> film, four by five film out, and then you you literally print it wet. Wow. Yeah. And then wow. I don't know. It, it, these things are, are meaningless nowadays. I this, mean, who's, who's using film anymore? In this picture, it says, I asked her in Spanish to look at the camera and smile, but this is how she wanted the picture taken. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how did this uh, affect your photography and your sensibilities and your style? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. Well, I started out as a documentary newspaper photographer. so A photojournalist. Yeah, yeah. I, I was inspired by Bill Owens and, you know, people, Mary Ellen Mark, you know, these people that were the documentary photographers. So I started off with the idea that you don't do anything. You, you take the photograph. You don't interfere. Right. So I'm, I'm right. an observer. And that's really what photojournalism was in, at that time. And I think I wish it I still were to be honest. Now. It is oh, different now. Every, I'm different. Well, you, I, well, I, you I, see I pictures where they now. where they edit in explosions so that you know it looks like it's more of a war zone. I look at like a that. picture of what it can become. I mean, I, I I confess I'm really a different photographer now than I was when I did that book. Yeah. I, w I wouldn't be patient to, to shoot for five years to get what I think are thirty. Absolutely, absolutely right. perfect pictures. There's right. 75 in the book, but I think there's, there's probably 25 or 30 that are classic. But that took five years of shooting. I don't have that patience yeah. anymore. Yeah, this is a newspaper man. Yeah, I love it. I mean, they don't even you don't they see don't, them. Anymore. They don't make what was what is a newspaper? Yeah, yeah. yeah. just yeah. really. Hey, now this is out of me. print. I wish this were still in print, but uh, I well, have I'm, my. Copy. I'm working on that. I'm making an EPUB version Good. of it. Good. I'm going to have that out pretty soon. Good, because I love this. Go ahead, Trey. Nicole, I want to ask you about uh, people photography because you've been doing it for so long and I assume you still like to do people photography. Uh -huh. And, you know, back then, uh, it seemed like uh, back in the day that people were much more just wacky looking people, right? <laughs> and I wonder if, uh, you know, this is very meta, but, you know, as we continue to evolve, people look more and more average and you have to get out into the outskirts in order to find interesting looking people. And are you afraid that someday we'll just sort of evolve into this uh, race where everyone looks like creatures from Close Encounters, so we're all you know, the that's same? That's an interesting point, that's because I look point. at old photos, like Civil War photos and stuff, and I think, they don't look like we do. They do look yes. different. And even these pictures, and these are only 25 uh, to 35 years old, right. even these people look kind of different. Yeah. But when was the last time you were at a county fair? Yeah, right yeah maybe <laughs> you're right. This is how they look in the county yeah. fair. I think maybe, yeah, you... you Go out of that, uh, you know, that zone that you're in most of the time. I mean, most people are in a zone. Go to the county fair. We're, we're, we're I, hanging I, I suspect, out with the yuppies. I suspect the county fair is going to look pretty much the same as it, it always has. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think about Catherine Hall's pictures of uh, the ranchers in Tasmania. In Tasmania. Remember those faces? And the they kids? were every bit as grizzled, and, uh, and, yeah. and you saw their life in their pictures. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, Trey, also, you know, I think in terms of people photography, we're a little more careful about taking pictures of people nowadays. You know, there's all these rules, uh, you know, model releases and privacy rules. And, and photography's really, it's changed now. You don't get the street photography that you had from before because people are much more careful about shooting other That's people. That's kind of a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's too bad. I, I, um, I just take pictures of whatever. And I... Actually, my my uh, wife gets onto me from time to time because because um, I am now I don't know if aloof is the right word, but if I see something interesting or someone interesting, I can't help but want to take the photo of it. And I don't think about model releases and like a, a cadre of lawyers descending on me. It just feels like a natural artistic Good. moment. So I yeah. I really lament this the way that uh, yeah. lawyers have taken over common sense when it comes to photography. Although that is one thing I learned from uh, Bruce Dale and Catherine Hall and others was how they would approach people and make friends They're with amazing. people. And, and and there really was a way that they could relate to people. Here's the picture I was talking about that Catherine took in uh, Tasmania of that rancher. And I actually, uh, I, I remember going to this uh, ranch and I'm watching them work the crowd and uh, they would really develop rapport with people and take a lot of time to develop rapport with people and then get these amazing pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where their genius as photographers comes from. Mm. I mean, they're great photographers with the camera as well, but they're just, well, they're, it's both. they're people. It's they're both people, people. Yeah. You need to do both. Yeah. That's a, a very valuable uh, lesson yeah. actually. Uh, we're talking with Mikkel Olin, an old friend of mine and a great photographer. His website is... Still up? <laughs> Still up. <laughs> MikkelOland.com. Now, that's spelled M-I-K-K-E-L-A-A-L-A-N-D. Google that, too, not only to find his website, but also his great Learn by Video um, uh, programs for Photoshop CS5. I guess you'll do a 5.5 five. Yeah. and uh, Lightroom 3. I just finished the camera raw. Type. Oh, it'll be out in two weeks. Can't wait. Camera raw. Can't wait. Yeah. Raw that, processing that is one. yeah. That's a that's really a, a big deal.
We talk about that a lot, actually, on the show. Uh, Trey Ratcliffe is here. I love camera raw. Well, well wait, who doesn't love no, camera I mean, raw? For a while there, I was. Almost you mean you are talking about the Lightroom. Adobe Camera yeah. Raw processor? Yeah, yeah. it's part of Photoshop. Yeah. But for so long, I was really just into just going into Lightroom and doing all my raw processing. You do now. stuff in raw now. But you know why? Because with the with the new photo CS5 Photoshop, there's some yeah. really and Trey, you can you know what I'm talking about? HDR Pro in CS5 is is just awesome. Uh, so there's and then the content and where fill. So I'm using Photoshop more than I've ever used it before. Well, for a couple well, of years. For, at least. I think initially Lightroom was really just a front end to ACR. The whole idea was we've got this engine. Let's put a front end on it that gives us some of sliders and stuff. But but ACR has its own UI. They're, right? they're totally compatible. I mean, the, the engine behind Lightroom is is ACR. Same engine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But Lightroom does it's all in one. You can do right. everything. Right, right. But but I just went away from Photoshop for a while. Huh. And I'm back. I, content aware fill. Have you played with that at all? That's oh the that's the new feature at five that came out. Unbelievable! Yeah. I love that feature. <laughs> and HDR Pro. I, anyway, I, you, now you, Trey, you you're a photomatics guy. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I agree with Mikkel on the content aware fill. That thing is, um, you know, awesome. Dot com. Yeah. But the <laughs> uh, the HDR Pro inside uh, Adobe. Photoshop CS5, I think, is a little bit um, lacking. I've done a pretty good side-by-side -side comparison mm. between that and um, Photomatics. And Photomatics is only, what, 100 bucks or less than 100 bucks. Yeah. yeah, in terms of uh, speed and quality and so on and so forth. Because, you know, I do so much HDR stuff. I, right. um, I will, of course, choose uh, whatever is the most efficient, the best, and gives me the best results. And I, I would love it if I could do everything in Photoshop because I'm spending time in Photoshop cleaning up some of the mess that Photomatix makes anyway. Uh, so I would I prefer We've to stay about in that. Photoshop, yeah. but I, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. And he does, I mean, I got to tell you, if you go to stuckincustoms.com where Trace HDRs and other photos live, he's been doing some. We, we talk, I don't know if your ears were burning, Trey, when we talked about... Uh, with uh, Rick Salmon about uh, NASA. Was it Rick, Rick that we were talking about? Uh, or No, no, it was Stu Mastro. It was Stu. Yeah. yeah. About you going to, uh, to the, the, the NASA launch. Did you, and you missed the launch, didn't you? No, no, no. I, I got went back? the launch. Oh, and good. I took a photo of the, um, the space shuttle just as it got up into the clouds. And it was, uh, yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a CST wormhole opening. Yeah, that's right. I remember that now. Yeah, an amazing picture. If you scroll, keep scrolling down, you'll see yeah, it yeah. Uh, somewhere there. Did I, did I go past it? I might have gone past it. And now Endeavor's coming home uh, in the next day or so, I think. Yeah, they land really soon. Yeah. It's, uh, you must have cool. kind of a feeling about it, right? Yeah. I, uh, that's your, I had that's to go your launch. Twice. Um, <laughs> the first time it was scrubbed, and, you know, it's very difficult to go out there and take tons of lenses, and you set up, and then at the last second you find out it's not going to go off. So you have to come back home and disassemble everything. Then you go back to Florida again. So it's... It's quite an emotional roller coaster. There it is. This is an amazing picture. Oh, my yeah, God, it's beautiful. How how long was the lens you used to shoot that? I did that with a fifty millimeter prime lens. You lie. I'm not lying. Is that a major crop? How did you? Well, yeah, I did crop in. But here's the the story: is that I had two cameras. I had um, my D3X and a D3S. And my D3X was set up on a tripod, and I had a uh, 28 to 300 lens on there. And as soon as it took off, I started firing away. But I was only able to take photos for about 15 seconds before it started to buffer. And it hadn't quite hit the, um, the, the cloud layer yet. So then I had my uh, uh, 50 millimeter on the D3S, and I had that sort of on one of those uh, uh, straps across my body like a Chewbacca bandolier. And I... <laughs> And I whipped it up, and I, I just started firing away right as it went into the clouds. And I'm actually incredibly embarrassed because it was really, really overexposed. Even though I had practiced a bunch of times, all the other photographers thought I was crazy by practicing this move over and over again. <laughs> it was really overexposed, and it was, you know, this camera raw that allowed me to yeah. pull back the exposure and pull in all these, uh, these nice light levels that were really there. But I actually missed because I didn't have my exposure set quite right. <clears throat> You did not miss. No, you didn't miss at all. <laughs> I just wanna just wanna say yeah, you works. did not miss. And yeah. I think it's just hysterical that you had, you know, you took a hundred pictures and the one you got was the one because you happened to have that fifty. 
slung around your neck. Which 50 was that, Trey? The... And 51.2. The one, two. Okay. Beautiful lens. And it, it actually looked okay in my warm up shots because you don't expect the uh, the shuttle to be so this bright. Is so it's bright. Like looking here. at the sun. Yeah. It's like looking at the sun. It's yeah. so bright. And so uh, I my settings weren't quite right, but uh, thank God for Camera Raw because I, I brought it back. Hey, Trey, come back. Uh, the next time you come back, we should do the thing we just did with Mikkel, which is a before and after. Yeah. You could show us the original of this if, you're, if you dare. I suppose you use the highlight recovery a lot there to pull it, but. We, did you lose some detail in the in the uh, highlights there? Oops, there it is. Um, yes, I. There was a little bit of detail lost. You can probably see I'm off on the white side on a lot of that, but you don't really notice because yeah. the eye is drawn to the parts where it's not quite blown out. Right. No, but that's the amazing thing about. Look at this. The I mean, there's slider. There's a lot of detail still in there. Oh, it's great. That's amazing. Yeah. Look at that plume. Mm -hmm. And thank you for putting it on Smug Mug, where we can get the full. Uh, quality picture on here that's nice oh sure we're all smug mug yeah, fans all three love of us smug mug. <laughs> <laughs> have you played with you guys played with 500 pixels 500 px it's an it's a new photo sharing site and uh, and uh, you know it's interesting I, I think there's a lot of people saying we've got to find an alternative to Flickr because yahoo is just not a good custodian of Flickr, hmm. and so there's a lot of um uh, you know, action in this space. And I just... What's it called again? 500px.com. I just found it. and uh, Yeah, it's cool. I it's, use 500px. Yeah. I put about uh, 12 photos on there. And uh, there's some elements of it that's really cool. I love the scoring. I think that's really neat. But even though the scoring is fairly nonsensical, <laughs> I think photographers still love to see that their we, pictures are getting yeah, views. We like And scores. there's some kind of score. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I like that... The, the talent level on there is remarkable because unlike Flickr, where you just dump everything, uh, this one, it really encourages you to put up the best of the best. And so you surf around, you see all these amazing uh, photographers. And uh, we talked about this last time, Leo, either, either seeing all these beautiful photos depresses you or it inspires you. Yeah. Uh, it inspires me. And that's why I love surfing around and finding uh, really interesting photos. Yeah. And you're right. I think maybe because it's new. Uh, but people are putting their best stuff up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is, yeah. Is and, it free? Is it, uh, it's free, and then there's a paid version uh, as well. And um, uh, I'm seeing some amazing shots here. Mm. Yeah. So uh, it's just, you know, it's a, just another thing. And, and the 500 is a 5 and the infinity sign. Get it? I don't know. I don't really get it. But uh, here's here's one of the – I just favorited some shots just just to play with it. This is a great shot. It's the desert sands in the Sahara. So is this trying to compete directly with Flickr? Or trying I to think compete that's what they're trying Smugma. to do. So I think it's more of a Flickr, don't you, uh, Trey? Not, it's not on the higher end. Not the because you've got like and dislike uh, things. And, yeah, and it's the, very social. And it's, it has the, the following metaphor rather than the friend metaphor. Right. Like, uh, yeah. because a friend is just, uh, following is just a, a much nicer way to, uh, to see what's going on among people that you think are interesting. And uh, they, they use that metaphor. They do it great. And they're incredibly responsive in Twitter. Whenever there's a problem, oh, that's they have an idea, they're very socially adept. And it's got that kind of new company feel to it. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it's nice. And, yeah. you know, I think it's, uh, it's certainly more exciting than Flickr. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Of course, all of these sites are great when they first start and are fresh. And it's just people who really care about it. And then as... Uh, as, but look, you see all the all the sharing things, all the comments. I think this is very interesting. Anyway, I wanted to give him a plug. Yeah, yeah. Just thought I'd give Sounds him a plug. Good. We're going to take a break, and uh, we have some good uh, news for somebody uh, coming up in just a little bit. This show, as always, brought to you by our good friends at Ford, makers of the all-new, completely redesigned 2011 Ford Explorer with the best-in-class V6 highway fuel economy of 25 miles a gallon, three rows of seats, for up to seven people, uh, six, I'm sorry, 80.7 cubic feet of space when you fold down that second and third row, 255 foot-pound of torque and 290 horsepower on that 3.5-liter V6 engine means it's great for towing, too, with the optional towing uh, package, up to 5,000 pounds. I just love the Ford Explorer, and we really are glad that Ford is supporting our Mostly Photo Adventures website. If you go to mostlyphotoadventures.com, not only can you find out more about the new Ford Explorer, but you can see how it's going with our Mostly Photo Award finalists. Now, I'll show you the finalists for next week in a second, but first let me give a little congratulations to Jared Ropolato, who won 
both the Editor's Choice Award and the People's Choice Award with this incredible picture. Remember, the assignment was light, the Golden Gate Bridge and the glowing San Francisco Bay. Trey, you liked this picture a lot. Yeah, I think that's that's the winner of the three. And uh, I only wish that he would tell us, because he's a winner, I think he owes it to us to geolocate exactly where he took this photo. I know where it is. <laughs> you do? <laughs> I do. Next time you come to San Francisco, I'll show you. It's on, right. the, it's on the Marin side. It's right down by the uh, Yacht Club there. And one of the reasons I know exactly where that is is because remember we did the show Roz Rose where Roz Savage rode across the Pacific? Hey, this is right next to where she launched her Pacific uh, crossing. She rode her way across. And I remember her going under the bridge right there. So I know. I'll show you, Trey. <laughs> next time you're up here, okay? So congratulations, right. Jared wins $200 Amazon gift certificates. Thanks to Maddie and Jamie, our other competitors who were really great. But Jared gets a $100 Amazon certificate because you picked him in the uh, People's Choice Award and because uh, Trey picked him. Now, we're, we've, we've got three new finalists. Remember, this one's going to go two weeks. You have uh, uh, It says on the uh, site June 7th we're going to announce, but we're actually going to go another week. So you have through June 12th to tweet your favorite of these three finalists. Did you pick these, Trey, for us? Or did no, Lisa I pick did not. These? Lisa, Lisa picked these. The assignment was animal. And uh, you know how Lisa loves her HDR. There's an HDR of a hound with his, his ears blowing in the wind. There's a cute little squirrel. What's not to love about squirrels? He says, where are my nuts? And uh, finally, a kitty cat. So you get now. You're not voting for the type of animal. You're <laughs> you're voting. Although no, you're right, <laughs> I kind of like that one. <laughs> I like kittens. So here's the deal. Uh, and by the way, thanks to uh, Kenny Marlin who did the hound picture, M J Squire photography, the squirrel picture, and uh, Josh Duffy photo for the kitty picture. Here's how you vote. You just tweet. Mostly photo award nineteen. 20 or 21, use a hashtag. It's all uh, online if you go to mostlyphotoadventures.com, all the details on the contest. And uh, we have $200 Amazon gift certificates to give away. Um, next time will be June 14th, and Mikkel Oland helped us decide on our topic. Flags. Flag day is June 14th, so we're going to do flags. So here's the deal. Take a picture of a flag, doesn't have to be American flag, of a flag, and post it on our Mostly Photo group on Flickr. That's flickr.com slash groups slash Mostly Photo. One word, you'll have to join the group, but it's free to do so. Make sure you tag the picture with flags so we know that you've entered into that uh, contest. All the contest rules are online right here at mostlyphotoadventures.com. And uh, maybe one of your pictures will be our finalist next time. Uh, week eight for our photo awards. And make sure you vote. Tweet for uh, the hound dog. Actually, let me see what the, the tag is. That's hashtag pound mostly photo award 19. This is pound mostly photo award 20. And this is pound mostly photo award 21. We will count those tweet votes in the People's Choice Award winner. I have my pick. I know which one I'm voting for. You guys know which one you're voting for? I do. <laughs> I think we all agree. And we, and, and, well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And, uh, and actually, Catherine Hall will be picking our winner uh, for uh, June 14th. Catherine starts as the host of our show, which is going to be renamed, just so you know, uh, Twit Photo. Uh, and Lisa will show up, I'm sure, whenever she's around, because we love Lisa, and we'll, we'd love to have her uh, in any time. But uh, she's so busy nowadays that uh, Catherine Hall's agreed to step in and take over the show, and we're excited, too. We're going to keep this format, too. I really like this format of interviewing photographers we love and looking at pictures. It, 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 that's the thing I love about this show more than anything, is looking at pictures. It's just so much fun. So um, we've looked at one of your pictures, Mikkel. We've looked hey, at while Mikkel's here, can I ask him a digital photography question? Yeah. So... Mikkel, you're uh, you know you're both old school. You did film, and now you you're really into digital photography, and you've been following the the trajectory of it ever since its inception. And so, you know, going meta once again, looking at where we are now in in 2011, I wonder if you're able to kind of extrapolate where you think we might be going because we still use these um, 
DSLRs, right, that have this mirror that flaps up and down, which is sort of a, a Da Vinci-esque uh, throwback. <laughs> unless, right? you, unless you've got a micro four thirds, but uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you think that these, these Sony cameras, these SLTs, these uh, single lens uh, translucent things that have a, uh, a piece of glass that allow the, uh, the light to still bounce up into the viewfinder, but they also allow the, the phase change autofocusing, which is, which is very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that is a possible future direction that all cameras will evolve into, or are we gonna be stuck with these uh, mechanical devices that flop around inside of our cameras have, for a Have either time? of you guys played with these SLTs? I'm, no, but this I, is intriguing. But I'm I'm actually very interested in the future of photography, and yeah. that's what you're talking about, the future of the camera. And uh, there's some really interesting computational uh, work being done with, um, with, it, with in terms of uh, having a camera that does a lot of things that you we can't even conceive of right now. Uh, but it's all done on the computational part uh, side of things. Uh, so in, when we're talking about uh, down the road, I think there's going to be evolutionary things. That, and I think what you're talking about, Trey, is fairly evolutionary. But there's also going to be some kind of huge leaps. And I don't think those huge leaps are going to take place with the traditional camera manufacturers. Uh, I think it's going to be somebody. It's, it's going, going to be, be red somebody. and like the Epic yeah, and things like that. It's going to be somebody yeah. in a garage. Yeah. And they're just going to say, wait a minute. You know, throw away all. Even the, the whole glass optic thing can, can go away when you start uh, starting from scratch with some of the, the new ways that they're looking at collecting light and uh, sensors. So I think, I think we really can't... Um, look at the traditional camera and extrapolate out from there to get the future of photography. We need to look at um, cameras that uh, do HDR video and, st and, and stills at the same time. I think there's a lot of things that um, we, have to th we have to think in terms of, of uh, photography as in, in, in not capturing um, necessarily fractions of sec seconds, you know, but duration of time as well and not having to choose one or the other like we do now. You, you have to choose whether you shoot video or you right. shoot stills. And that's, that's fundamentally um, clumsy. Right. So uh, the camera of the future, well, you won't have to take, make that decision because you can shoot a video and there'll be enough resolution in, the, in, a, in a, a frame grab, if you will. The, I'm just talking about a few of the things that we're going to see down the pipe. We, we've and, seen we, prototypes we for multi-focal focal plane cameras, that, so you don't have, you know, you'll have different focuses you can, you can choose. choose. And that's all this computational stuff. Yeah. You can even take pictures from around the corner. Right. If you have the right computation. It's about collecting the data in some form or fashion and, and then the using data? this heavy it's data not only light yeah but it's data. all kind incorporating all kinds of data yeah. and and then building a photograph built on all that other metadata. But you know what's not going to change the heart and soul of the photographer the person who picks the composition who makes brings that picture to life that is that's the art and that's never going to change is Ultimately, it yeah. yeah absolutely yeah and that's that's the key and that's why i love doing this show is talking to great artists like yeah. you michael olin like trey ratcliffe um Really fun. Yeah, it's a great. Yeah. It's a really exciting space to be in, right? You know, now. you know, you know who taught. You know who talked Mikkel Olin into digital photography. Ah, who? You remember? I do remember. Yeah. Tell that story. Yeah, it's a, a photographer by the name of Ansel Adams, and uh, I've interviewed him in 1981, I think it was, and I asked him. I was young. I was in my 20s, and I said, "What would you do if you were starting over again?" And he didn't miss a beat. The first thing he said was video. And then really? Said, yeah. Now that he part said, of the story I don't no, remember. No, that, that's, that's part of the story. Yeah. He said video. Then he just, he really, I think what he was really meaning was electronic photography. He didn't, then he said electronic photography. Right. Because back in those days, we called it electronic <laughs> photography. There were no, and there were still video cameras right. that we were talking about. Right. So I think that's what he meant more when, than video per se. He but meant He digital. meant the electronic. We didn't even start using the word digital until the <laughs> early 90s. Do you remember that? My first book was I called do. Electronic Photography. And that last minute, they changed it to digital no photography. No kidding. Last minute, 1991, because Kodak had come out with a photo CD process, and they called it digital. So all this advertising was going on. No more it electronic. It was not digital. It was electronic. Wow. We, they were, these were analog uh, you know, wow. images. And now, Say, that's a book I wish I had. Digital, you don't have digital photography. Maybe I do. I'll have to look oh, for I'll it. The you. original book about digital photography. And that was uh, what, the first popular guy. book written on digital photography. 
Random House published it. I'll get you a copy. I have I might a basement have full of them. <laughs> oh, well, I'll take it then. <laughs> I'll give you a box. I might have it. I have, you know, I, I was able to dig up the county fair portraits. I, I'm a big fan, as you know. Yeah. Here's a picture of Mickle in Tasmania doing what he does so well. With the which Tasmanian is, devil. With a Tasmanian devil Ooh. and a very bored zookeeper. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but those devils were cute. Come they on. were cute. Oh, man. They were cute. And uh, one of the things that uh, happened in that Tasmanian uh, Lightroom adventure is all the photographers made prints on those oh, great Epson printers that, that uh, Epson provided. We made beautiful, large, I think they were 19 by 14 prints. 13 by 19. 13 by 19, yeah. and sold them uh, to benefit the Tasmanian We made devil. A lot, thousands of dollars yeah. to benefit the, 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 the Save the Tasmanian Devil yeah, Fund. Was yeah. a really, that was a good trip. Great trip. Really good memories. I'm you, so glad you came. You two have something in common, because Trey's been to Iceland, too, and has ooh, some beautiful Iceland ooh, photos. My, my other favorite place, Trey. Yeah. Yeah, boy. I go in about, a, I leave in about a week. I go back every uh, summer for the solstice. I love it. I lo love that place. Absolutely. Yeah. It's one of my favorite you places. Go, wait a minute. You go every year to uh, Iceland for the solstice? I've been about four years, and uh, you know what it is? is uh, During the solstice, there's, a, there's an eight-hour sunset followed by an eight-hour sunrise. Oh, so man. I, I go to sleep at 10 a.m. and wake up at 5 p.m., so I sleep during the day, yeah. and then I stay up all night. Because, you know, here in our tropic or our latitude, we're, we're used to this sunset being this high-anxiety 30-minute period where you only have a little bit of time with this right. perfect light. Right. Uh, but there, it is drawn out, and you enter in sort of this dream light state oh. and um it's just uh, oh, photography can go a lot of bizarre places at that time that's why we took the first adventure to iceland right. exactly for that reason right. for the light the light the extraordinary yeah. light and the landscape it's all about the light mickle oland is online his new website mickleoland.com m-i-k-k-e-l Double A N D double A L A N D dot com. Look for his Learn by Video videos uh, online from Adobe Press, and come back. You're you're in the Bay Area. You're back home. Except you're going to Norway now. Just for the summer. Okay. Yeah. In the fall, come back. Yeah, we'll be back. I'd love to see you again. Love to come. Trey Ratcliffe, thank you. It's always a pleasure getting Trey on this show. He's my inspiration in many ways. <laughs> I I just really uh, I just think you're a, a mensch. Well, you know what's interesting? Both of you guys are actually very deep, profound. People, in addition to great photographers, maybe there's something there. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> maybe maybe there's something to it. Trey, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Stuckincustoms.com, and don't forget, 100 cameras in one now with Instagram support. Uh, the Apple uh, iTunes uh, store for the iPhone and the iPad. Thanks, Trey. Thank you, Leo. Nice meeting you, uh, Mickle. It was uh, really cool to talk to you. Yeah. Likewise, Trey. I hope I can meet you in person. Yeah. When sometime. you come out here, Trey. We'll go down to that place by the Golden Gate Bridge, and we'll bring Mickle. Okay, I <laughs> warn you, Mickle, I'm much more impressive over the Internet than I am in person. <laughs> Not so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Don't forget, next week we're taking the week off. We're going to be live from Los Angeles for the E3 Gaming Conference next Tuesday. But we will back, be back June 14th with a new Twit photo rebranded with our new host, Catherine Hall. I'm very excited about that, so tune in for that. You can still get this show. You will always be able to get this show at twit.tv slash photo, and we are going to keep it at the same time, so you can watch us Tuesdays starting June 14th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern at live.twit.tv. For Trey Ratcliffe and Michael Olin, I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Mostly Photo. Mm -hmm.